Hi, everybody. This is a wee bit of alchemy. I'm Rick Barrett. Welcome. Today, I'd like to discuss uh, a bit about establishing relationship to the to space in, in terms of heaven and earth and yin and yang. And one of the questions that came up in the, uh, uh, the talk just previously is, what distinguishes yin and yang? Why do we consider, why do the Chinese uh, consider yang to be, or heaven to be the most yang and, and earth to be the most yin? And so I think a real important point is just to remember is that these are just descriptions. These are ways of, of thinking about things. And they, the question comes to what do they evoke in you? And this gets to the relationship part that I want to talk to, is it's defining your relationship to stuff and to non-stuff. And when we do that, things change. We change whenever we change the relationship to it. So we're looking at it from a particular perspective. So there, in terms of yin and yang, there is no absolute yin and absolute yang. In the I Ching, heaven, is considered to be a metaphorically absolute yang. It's it's where you, even though we, um, uh, in in practice, it's probably not. But the the idea of heaven is where we have moved so far from form and and into insubstantiality that there is ultimate expansion and there's nothing to contract around. Whereas earth is very contracted, very, very solid, very dense. And, and so it is where yin and substantiality meet. So we the, the more substantial it becomes, the, more, the denser it becomes and the more, uh, the, the more yin it becomes in this case, but since Everything has a yin and yang aspect to it. Everything has an insubstantial and substantial aspect to it. You can quickly flip that on its head and turn it around and, and make a case for the exact opposite. And, and people do. So it's just a question of language. And so I, I, um, what I wanted to get to tonight is to just to have, say, uh, a, a common language to say this is what we're getting out. So rather than arguing uh, about the semantics of it, and uh, although the semantics are really important, it is to actually go beyond that and just use the words as touchstones that enable us to explore something very important about our relationship to these things. So if we were to consider that a yang impulse is an expanding one and a yin impulse is a contracting one. And if we just start with that as our, as our foundation, if we have that as like a, as a given or as a, a way of thinking about it, uh, we, can, uh, we can then organize information around that. So then we think, okay, in terms of like say the stages of water, we have the steam is where it gets so hot, it expands so much that it becomes very insubstantial in terms of its of the way it's packed in. Although steam in its insubstantiality still can pack a heck of a wallop if you've ever been burned by a uh, by steam, it's uh, it's like it. Oh, okay. There, there's something to this. So it's not insubstantial in its entirety, but it is the most insubstantial form of water. Whereas the um, ice would be the opposite end of the spectrum, where the water has contracted to a crystalline form, where it has become very substantial very dense, very solid, very fixed in its location and, and its relationships to itself. 
by comparison. And so we say, okay, that is the yin pole of this, of, if we just to consider the different stages of water. And then the fluid state that we are more familiar with is, is somewhere between. It's a mixture of yin and yang, depending on how hot it is and how much it's flowing, et, et cetera, et cetera. And so we take that idea and we move that into our relationships, including our relationship to our environment, to space, to our bodies, everything. We can then label these things as more yin and more yang in a particular context within a particular set of parameters. And which of course can be flipped around and a case can be made for the exact opposite if you want to look at it from a, from a different perspective. So with that in mind, we want to consider like heaven and earth. Why is heaven considered to be the most young part? Well, that's because it is the most expanded. Earth is considered to be most contracted. Good. Okay, we got that. And you could also say that heaven is the, the least substantial and earth the most substantial. It doesn't mean that yin and yin and substantial are equal. It just means that they they're seen together sometimes. And uh, but there's an insubstantial and a substantial aspect to earth as well as heaven. And so you can, depending on the perspective and what case you want to make at a given point. I want to take that and move it away from fixed ideas about what is yin, what is yang, what is substantial, what is insubstantial, and more into how do these words help us to define our relationships? And more than just define them, how do they help us to explore relationships and explore new relationships to our environment, to ourselves, to, to that which is, has no form, whatever we are choose to, uh, to relate to. Because when we relate, something changes. So I draw a distinction between the observational mode or the I it mode and the relational mode, which is the IU mode. Whenever I encounter someone or something as a partner in an event, something's happening and I've got a partner there. And if I am relating to that person or thing as, as you, then it changes. There is no object. There is no, there's nothing to observe. There is only now. And um, there's a, a great quote from a, a poet, uh, Jude Rittenhouse, who, uh, who said that meaning is, I'm gonna goof this up, but let me try it anyway. Uh, Meaning is found and sought when we no longer hear eternity in wave after wave after wave. And she's basically expressing, I think, the essence of, of, of Taoism there. And that is whenever we start to label things, we start to think about things, then we are move into observational mode and we exit from eternity. And that's fine because eternity is, uh, is a nice place to visit and I'm sure we'll spend more time there. And you should go there every day, but uh, part of being human is to not get stuck in eternity. It's to, get, to be able to be in time and to actually have relationships with other people and to think about things and tell neat stories and have experiences and all those things require that you have one foot out of eternity. And so the ability to toggle between eternity and, and, and life is I think an important skill. 
So um, we uh, we get there. Um, we the ability to toggle happens whenever we are moving into that superconscious state. That is whenever we are able to integrate the eye of flesh, the eye of mind, and the eye of spirit. And just to refresh people in case those terms are uh, new or forgotten, the idea is that the eye of flesh is that which is occurring prior to conscious thought. So your all the processes of your roughly 70 trillion cells and all the things when they combine together, all those things that are happening prior to the to you and your conscious mind saying, hey, that's hot, or wow, what a nice day. Something like that. You um, prior to that, there is a ton of information that is occurring much more than your conscious mind can keep track of. So it quickly moves into the, it trips the infinity lever whenever you move quickly into starting to think about all the possibilities of, of just what's happening in your own body. When you get 70 trillion cells and each of those cells having millions of processes going on every, every moment and and each of those processes having parts. And so then quickly, you know, things get out of control. So our conscious mind are tasked with the job of just summarizing moments and writing little headlines and little aphorisms that we can remember. So that uh, buy milk, um, walk the dog, stuff like that, that, you know, we can, we can formulate into simple ideas that, that we can keep track of because the conscious mind is rather stupid by comparison. <laughs> uh, thank you, Lynn. Uh, um, <laughs> I got mine. Um, so the conscious mind is rather stupid by comparison to the possibly trillions of bits of information that are happening in your body mind at any given moment. So the uh, so that's the eye of flesh. The eye of mind is that part which creates meaning. It says, "Hey, I can figure this stuff out," and and it creates little summaries that we can we can live by. Little notes that we can set there and put on the refrigerator and and say, "Yes, you know, neither a borrower nor a lender be." Or loan off loses both itself and friend, something like that. You can kind of toss that crap out and and remember, and you can set that and you can say, I'm going to live my the rest of my life this way, and we create these these ideas and that creates meaning. Whenever we get the eye of flesh and the eye of mind, when we turn the eye of mind to the eye of flesh, and we start to tune into that, we create a, an integration there. And that pops us into the eye of spirit. And when those three get together, it's what I'm calling super consciousness. You can think of a catchier term for it if you like, but that's what, that's what I call it just so I can have something to talk about. So whenever we go into relational mode, we shift from the eye of mind, which is in the observational mode into that superconscious, and then we are into a expanded awareness and things get really cool then. And then we can do Tai Chi Chuan, then we can do Qigong, we can do all kinds of cool stuff. So what I would like to do with this is to explore the relation to heaven and earth metaphorical heaven and earth, energetic heaven and earth as, um, as relations. So the first thing you, I think it's important to re remember, realize is that, that the environment that the head occupies is somewhat different than the environment that the feet occupy. And they have different ways of 
of gathering information as a result of that. And the head tends to be in a more, in, environment tends to be a little more insubstantial. The feet being attached to the ground, earth, floor, etc., tends to gather its information in a more substantial way. Consequently, humans have evolved since we started this whole bipedal experiment. We have evolved to have a different relationship between our feet and our, and our heads. Uh, and consequently, the energies are, that are produced are, are different. The head is more yang, the feet are more yin. And just as a way of talking about it. And the energy and information that comes in through the feet is going to be different than the energy that's coming into the head. And so we're moving beyond the energy, the, the information that is purely processed by the intellect and into actually feeling, actually sensing using those perceptics that are awakened by shifting into a superconscious state. So we're gonna do some fun exercises to just explore those relationships. But before we do that, I would like to ask if there are any questions about what I've asked so far, so that uh, we not, we're moving forward and people got an idea what, what's, what's going on. Anybody? No, all good. Great. Okay. So let's let's have some fun then. Okay. So we're going to build on what we've been doing the last few weeks, and that is exploring space, creating space. And then that creating the space then allows for stuff to happen. If there's no space there, if you're, you're not aware of the space, then you're not aware of, of the events that are occurring there, or you're at the very least, you're not gonna get as much out of it. So let's begin. Feet together. You can have the toes apart or together, whatever, or parallel, whatever you like. Step out with your left foot. Pivot. There you go. So the feet are now parallel. And let's establish the three pillars. Why? Because this allows us to remove the barriers to accessing that connection that we we're talking about, and also allows us to shift quickly into a superconscious state. So feel your feet on the floor, feel the balls of your feet, feel the weight distributed throughout your feet, but your focus, your pivot point is right on the balls of the feet. Reach for the crown of your head and tuck in your chin. As you do that, you open the jade pillow gate at the base of your skull. Accessing the spirit of vitality, the Jingshan. Knees are unlocked, not bent much, but unlocked. Relax your lower back and allow your sacrum, your coccyx to reach to the floor and level out your pelvic bowl.
each time you make an adjustment, check again to make sure your central equilibrium is, is continuous. You can feel the balls of your feet, reach for the head, reach for the crown. Keep going back and reasserting that central equilibrium. Point your index fingers, feel the energy in your hands, feel that connection. And reach with your elbows, elbows, arms are rounded slightly. You're reaching with the elbows and opening the shoulder joints, unkinking the hose there. Release the quad. Allow yourself to sit down into your legs. Feel the energy in your hands and your feet. And feel down through your feet. And feel the space below. Extend your awareness down, at least as far down as you are tall, as your body is tall. We'll take that a little deeper, but let's start with that. Just imagine a bubble there that extends down that could contain your entire body if you, if you like. What we have here is we have the substantiality of Earth, and then we've entered the insubstantiality of this bubble there, this space. I want you to just think of, I do not want you to just think about that. I want you to feel it. I want you to feel the space in that solidity. And then I want you to feel the solidity or the substantiality in that space. So you get both of those going there. Feel your body sinking deeper as you get more comfortable with that space below your feet. Now feel the crown of your head. And I want you to feel a point in the space above your head, about six inches. There is an energy location there that some esoteric traditions consider to be very important. Some consider it to be one of the additional chakras. It doesn't matter. What matters is that when you reach up here and you locate that point and you reach up with your crown to that point, you're establishing a relationship to something beyond your physical form. You're creating space above you. You're reaching to that. You're establishing a relationship to that space. And as you do that, you want to maintain your connection with the space below you.
as we move into that insubstantiality, the space above us, it opens certain gates that allow for energy and information to enter. They're not accessible to the eye of mind. The labels that I've just given them are not really all that important other than just something to talk about. What's important is your relationship to it. You're feeling into that point above you. Feel into your, into your body and it will give you some feedback about this. You're probably gonna notice your hands getting quite um, lively. Your perception of your body may alternate between substantial and insubstantial. You may feel it as a density or you may feel it as space and both are true. Depending on whether you're perceiving the yin or the yang, the insubstantial or the substantial. And in the superconscious state, you get to have both. Extend your awareness even higher. Establish a space the size of your body above your head. Create an insubstantial space there that you can then occupy. Feel the space below your feet, feel the space above your head. Feel them connected through your physical form. Now, our capacity to establish relation is directly related to our ability to reach. That is, anytime we reach, we're extending awareness with a specific intent. The reaching implies extending, but also implies extending to connect, not to push away, but to connect. So feel yourself expanding even farther. Let's take it down two body lengths and up two body lengths. Feel yourself occupying that space. So you're reaching into an area that maybe you don't occupy that space all the time. Maybe it would be impractical, but you're in a safe environment right now, so you get to explore that. Just to see what energy and information that brings you. That quality of reaching is what gives us any kind of qigong exercise you do or tai chi chuan or any kind of internal martial art. We're not just doing particular memorized set of movements which are designed to produce a certain physiological effect, although they do do that. 
What's more is by extending this quality of reaching into it, we then allow for a connection to the heaven and earth energies. that can transform even the simplest exercise into a very powerful spiritual encounter. So I'd like to do a set now that I learned, gosh, maybe 30 years ago from, um, I learned it from uh, Dr. Yang Jing Ming seminar I was doing at the old Taiji farm. And it kind of stuck with me because I thought it was a really neat set. And I think we may have done this uh, last year in, in this class. But we're going to take this and we're going to incorporate this new energy and information with that. Raise your hands up. And you inhale, your one hand goes up, it doesn't matter which one, the other one reaches down. So you're reaching up, you're reaching up with one hand, reaching down with the other. It's not enough that you're just going through this motion, you're just extending, but you want to feel you want to feel that. You want to feel the space that you're moving through as you do this. And the other one hand comes down, the other goes up. And reach. Really extend, lengthen. It's that quality of reaching that opens new possibilities. One hand down, one hand up, and reach. Feel that. Feel the lengthening. Feel the tensegrity in your tissues as you reach. Feel the, even those little turns of the forearms. Feel the effect those have. Now, as your hands come up, as they cross your chest, turn the body and reach with one hand out to the side, reach back with the other. Allow your Think of the, uh, the upper hand as the yang hand. It's reaching up into the space above, reaching toward the heavens. The other hand is reaching down toward the earth, making contact and coming down and turn and reach. Feel your opening. Turn.
feel the effect of the tensegrity by lengthening your, your connective tissue system, the tensegrity, how that energizes the whole system. Now step out and feel the ball, set the knee and reach. You'll notice that my knee is, I'm not going so far forward. Knees just slightly a, a forward of, of vertical. Pivot on your heel, pivot on your other heel and step, or not step, but reach. So you're extending. Notice the back leg is straight. The front leg is, the knee is vertical. I'm feeling the ball of the foot, feeling the connection to the whole body. Opening, pivot. Pivot and reach. You're gazing at your young hand. Pivot, pivot, reach. Pivot, pivot, reach. Pivot, pivot, reach. Back to center. Now we're going to do something a little interesting. And we're going to do a nice slow motion so you can get the idea on this. And you can vary the depth which you, you do this, but a, we're going to incorporate a dragon posture into this. So the idea is you reach out. In this case, it's my right hand. I'm reaching out, circling, reach out with my left hand and circle back. And then I pivot on the right heel and turn. So the whole body creates this twist. And then you pivot on the right heel Turn back to center, circle out with your left hand, right hand circles around, pivot on your left heel, left hand comes underneath and turn. Turn. Arms come around, reach with your left hand, reach with your right hand, circle, pivot on your right heel, right hand comes behind you, left hand reaches around, circle, The 
of him. Underneath, circle, reach around with the right hand, and then you sink, left hand behind. And back to center. Hands come down. And very slowly rotate your forearms. turning the palms forward, feeling your relationship to that very small motion there, rotating your forearms. And rotate back. Rotate. Deep breath. Exhale. One more inhale. Exhale. Feel into all those motions that you've just done. Don't think about them, just feel them. Allow the potentiality for all that movement to occur now. Zero manifestation. Infinite potentiality. Feel the earth under your feet. Feel through the earth. Reach up through your crown of your head into the heavens. And expand as far as you like in either direction. In both directions while maintaining the substantiality of your physicality as you do that. And allowing your body-mind to use whatever part of that infinite energy resource that you can process comfortably, safely, to heal whatever needs to be healed, And to create whatever structures that will serve you for your for the highest good. Step in with the left foot. And take a deep breath. And disappear the chi. Throw it away. Feel into the stillness. Grab a seat, please.
<laughs> Was that me? I just saw, <laughs> I just saw your comment, Pete. Yes. <laughs> hey, you know what? I got to tell you, I've been working for like since I saw you in Pennsylvania in June with Valerie, thanks to you, you know. And she's been taking me through a lot of things. And I've been like, I've been, she's been like the best teacher, not like to like, I'm not like trying to prod anything, but she's the <laughs> best because I've, because I've told her, I don't, I don't want her to take me too far because I'm both a golfer and a musician. And I don't want to be learn. I don't want, don't teach me all the, like the hot <laughs> legs, you know? And I understand. She, okay. <laughs> Thank you. Kate. That's it. Bye. <laughs> <laughs> and it was awesome. Okay. But that was, that was, that was like way cool. Way cool. Good. <laughs> Dennis, you got something? No? Okay. Oh, shit. It's my birthday, by the way. 61 Happy today. Birthday, Keith. Hey, brother. <laughs> there's no way you Happy should birthday. ever have known that. <laughs> uh, Richard. Um, I, I think I got a little tickled when you said, be sure to maintain the substantiality of your physical body. <laughs> Were you trying to say don't become don't become invisible? The, don't dissolve into eternity permanently. <laughs> Just <laughs> that was a definite possibility. <laughs> it, it it felt like it. Sharon. Well, I had a very interesting experience, but at the end, I became the song by Carol King. I feel the earth tumbling under my feet. <laughs> I feel the, I, well, I feel the earth, yeah, and the sky tumbling down. It's like I, I was that. <laughs> uh <-huh. laughs> I feel the earth move. Terrific. Yeah. Terrific. Uh, anybody else? Richard. Um, I. This is the first time I, I sort of extended what we were talking about. And I, when I was reaching, I was reaching up to the roof of my house and down to the floor of my basement. And uh, I felt as though I was now in the middle of a much stronger uh, field of energy, um, much more comprehensive and much more powerful. So th thank you for that, that just, that, it gave me a better understanding of reaching. Thank you. Beautiful. Wonderful. Valerie. Oh, I went out to a football field. I wasn't <laughs> messing around with any, <laughs> any two person above me or whatever. And being very, very circular in that. So, nice. you know, out to the sides and out front and back. Um, and still got in that space, kind of the same space I did last week of substantial, insubstantial, yin, yang. I mean, I could focus on something being yang and I could focus on something being yin, but it was so fluid that it, it, there was no longer any point to it, if that makes any sense. It was like, it was all coexisting at the same time in every place in my being, which became, it wasn't invisible. It was just huge. It was just huge and no limit. And by the by, when you were um, talking about, you know, like the steam and the ice cube, um, it, you know, I've heard that before, but it, it uh, made much more sense to me why, you know, then yes, heaven is, uh, deemed being, you know, the ultimate yin and earth being, I mean, the other way around, being the ultimate yang and earth being the ultimate, um, you know what I'm trying to say, words. Yes. Uh, yes. So I, I did like that, that comparison. It just, uh, that expansiveness. Right. As by no mean gospel, it's just a way of looking at it that I think is helpful in this particular context to think about it that way. Hey, you know, brother, 
<laughs> Take it as gospel. That's Ricky Dog. You all you guys are like 30 year fucking members. Excuse me. It's my birthday today. I'm checking out. Love you guys. Thanks for allowing you guys to allow me to attend. Happy birthday, Keith. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. <laughs> <laughs> Lynn. I just wanted to echo a little what Valerie was saying about we going. I found a lot of roundness happening. Like I couldn't go up without going out. It's just sort of coming sort of at least cylindrical and then mostly like going in all spheroid. the rooms at once. Yeah, yeah. Spheroid to be spheroid. technical. And it just felt so much better when I didn't try to limit when I just let the expansion go. Terrific. Yeah. Terrific. Cool. It was true. Great. Scott. I was having a little trouble with it um, with the hands until I decided to focus on the, you know, the I don't know what juxtaposition, I guess, of the of the two hands and the space between them and them pulling apart. And then everything went fucking well. Yeah. Great. Yeah. So it's that reaching thing again. That yeah. The, you know, feeling the relation between the two, between exactly. the two, and then we have we we're creating energy flow by establishing relationships. Terrific. And that last uh, that last dragon move is a very earthy move because. Earth chi and in, in, in uh, the elements is uh, is round, so it you know has that quality of integrating the uh, you know all of those elements into the roundness. Cool. Okay. Anybody else? Great. Well, thank you all so very much. This has been uh, just a lot of fun. Thanks for the opportunity. And uh, thank y'all. Thank, thank you, Maria. You. Thank you, Maria. Hello. <laughs> Thanks, Maria. Thanks, Maria. Goodbye. Bye. <laughs>